Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in today. My name is Frank Feltins, Japan Foundation Assistant Curator of Japanese Art at the Freya Gallery of Art and Arthur M. Sakla Gallery, the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. And today, I would like to introduce you to a small gem in our Gerhard Palver collection of Japanese illustrated books. This is a tiny volume by the artist Tomioka Tessai, simply called Waves. And I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you. Tomioka Tessai was one of the most widely respected intellectuals of his day. Tessai was born in 1836 and died in 1924. The nine decades of Tessai's life span one of Japan's most turbulent eras. Tessai lived throughout the long 19th century, a time that connects the waning days of Japan's shogunal system with the dawn of Japan's modern age, following the institution of a constitutional monarchy in 1868. During Tessai's lifetime, the country moved from an inward-looking and relatively secluded state to a key actor on the world stage. In short, Tessai bore eyewitness to some of the most cataclysmic moments in Japanese history, society, and culture. Tessai devoted his life to studying the past and used his insights for navigating his own times. The past provided a beacon of hope and expectation for a rapidly changing present. This book, simply called Waves, beautifully encapsulates the ways in which Tessai transposed aspects of his country's bountiful artistic traditions into a modern work of art. Tessai recognized and embraced the centuries-old presence of Chinese-inspired culture in Japan an infatuation that informed his idiosyncratic calligraphy. The book's cover and title pages are imprinted in Tessai's free-flowing, edgy calligraphy style. On the cover he states the title, Waves, painted by Sotatsu. It further has Tessai's signature underneath the title, Tetsu Doji. The signature echoes Tessai's lifelong interest in Chinese Taoism, while the inspiration for the book's waves theme comes from Japan's own past. On the title page, Tessai literally invites us to, quote, gaze upon waves, end quote, kanto. This invitation is as simple as it is powerful, all the more so since Sotatsu was a master of waves. The painter Tawaraya Sotatsu, who died around 1643, lived during another time of transition, when the warfare and factionalism of the 16th century subsided and gave way to the prolonged peace and prosperity of the 17th century. Sotatsu resided in the ancient capital of Kyoto, where he ran a so-called picture shop, a business that catered to walk-in clients wanting to buy a small picture down to commissions from the imperial court. Among his great accomplishments is the pair of screens now known as Waves at Matsushima. The work is Sotatsu's reconfiguration of a tempestuous ocean into an abstracted vista of wave patterns, with intermingled crests that seem to rise like white ghosts from the surface. Sotatsu, it seems, tried to deconstruct the very essence of the sea. 200 years later, Tessai turned to Sotatsu to uncover the nature of waves. The book's title page unveils its message, gazing onto waves. To Tessai, Sotatsu provided a paradigm for recasting every conceivable motion of water into a work of art. In 22 circular images, one per page, Tessai captures a different mood each time. Some of his waves are quiet and contemplative. One can almost hear the silent ripple of the water as it sways back and forth. At other times, the mood shifts to prancing wave crests that 
loom high above the water surface. They seem like spectral riders trying to defy gravity as they rise higher and higher. We hold our breath and wait until they crash down in a thunderous sound. The book follows no discernible logic. Tame waves like this one on page 20 are followed by a series of turbulent wave images whose only unifying factor is the watery nature in and of itself. Published in 1910 by Unsodo, a Kyoto-based press famous for its lavish art publications, the book was printed in ink and glistening mica. Pointing a light onto the pages of the book illuminates the pictures, casting the waves into a sparkling sheen. Tessai took this technique from other works by Sotatsu, who had made a name for himself with his prized paper deckers, like this one of a no libretto, also in the Palvra collection. Now, finally, one question remains. Why did Tessai make a book of waves? We do not know other than his affection for Sotatsu. Tessai takes us on a journey through time and space, asking us to serve the waves with him. This book was meant to be contemplated each page, each wave at a time. Flipping from page to page, from wave to wave, the rhythm oscillates between calm, foreboding and tempestuous. Akin to a symphony, Tessai captures our attention by keeping us engaged and inspired throughout. Similar to the parts of an orchestra, Tessai seems to conduct the ocean and makes it dance to his tune. Thank you for listening. <laughs>